Hey there, this is Matt Painting. Uh, I'm Matt, and today I'm going to be talking about this piece of artwork that I did for uh, a friend of mine. This is cover art for their band's new uh, EP. It's called Glass Atlas. Uh, his band is called Tactus. If I remember correctly, the story for the EP is that there is um, a magician who kind of exists in multiple dimensions and he creates this tree and in whichever dimension that um, he's in this tree provides him something that is helpful to him uh, like be it shade or food or or something like that that was a general concept so when my friend asked me to do the the, the work for him the idea was that there would be an image of a tree in kind of like a barren wasteland, so like you see like a desert here, uh, and it would be all kind of tilted uh, as if you were looking through some kind of portal or some kind of rift. Um, this was the final image, uh, and this is what they use for their EP. So today I'm going to be talking about how I created this and the techniques I used to do it. So I start with a blank canvas in Photoshop, uh, and I believe that the dimensions of this are around uh, 8 by 8 inches at uh, 300 dpi. Now this video has been sped up um, eight times because the entire thing took me a couple of hours to do. I think the video is about 25 minutes. So what I've done here um, is I've got a couple of uh, images that I've sourced from um, Google's royalty-free image search. Uh, and I'm kind of just mashing them together to get a, uh, to get kind of um, an idea of what the scene's gonna look like. So as you see right here, I'm uh, taking out a lot of the background stuff that I don't want, the low res stuff in the background, and just the general the general stuff that I don't need. Uh, right here, I'm uh, cutting out these people, I think they were sitting on a sand dune. Um, I'm kind of cutting them out and filling them back in with a few things because I didn't want them to be there. I'm using the, the, clone, the, the clone and the patch tool for this. Um, now I'm cutting out the, the sky and I'm going to color adjust everything here because I've got two different images. One is of this big kind of huge dune, like this big majestic dune in the background, and I've got all these smaller kind of wavy soft sand dunes in the foreground. So I'm going to be color correcting these. It's very important to do this just because you don't want your, your image looking like it's been sourced from a couple different things. It all kind of needs to blend in seamlessly. So now I'm throwing in some, some kind of uh, just just uh, some color here, just to kind of bring the overall tone of the the larger sand dune image up, and then I'm messing with the individual parts of it to make it look a little bit more uh, like the, the foreground. The idea is to blend them both together. So as you can see, I'm kind of giving them a little bit of a red tint here, just so that they blend. Now this stuff is all this stuff is pretty basic. It's just messing around with colors and kind of making it fit. So there's not really a ton I can say about this. Um, one important thing I would suggest would be to always use royalty-free images when you can. Um, you, you know, you don't want to be stealing someone else's stuff. That's not cool. So now I'm putting in the sky. Since I have these two images um, on their own separate layers, I can just throw random sky images behind it. I use a lot of kind of blending with the eraser tool and a lot of um, layer blending options to kind of put these together. I'm a big fan of of clouds, uh, and you can get some really cool effects with the layer blending options, um, especially with things like clouds, where they're very kind of abstract and random and don't necessarily need to blend together like seamlessly to actually look cool. So I've got three different Im images here for the clouds, um, and it seemed to work out. Uh, so I'm just going ahead right now and putting in some some dust I think this is. Uh, I needed some kind of thing to break up the the background a little bit and kind of give it a sense of depth. So I made this just simple custom brush. Um, I'm going ahead and just messing around with some noise filters and opacity and stuff like that just to kind of make the foreground pop out a little bit from the background and to kind of give it some kind of some plane, some depth there. So I have these images of trees. Now I don't think half of this stuff ends up working the way I wanted it to. I had I hadn't really I hadn't really planned too much of what I was going to do for the tree. With most of my art and most of the work I do, I just kind of wing it until something works. So right now I'm I'm cutting out these images of trees. 
and I realized it's just not gonna not gonna work the way I wanted it to. So I got this bigger image of a tree. Um, and I think, if funny enough, I think when I actually started this, uh, cutting this stuff out, uh, I, I I distinctly remember thinking to myself, "Yeah, this thing is gonna be a nightmare and probably not gonna work." But you never know until you actually try. So I did go ahead and try to isolate a lot of the the branches on this tree and cut out the background. In the end, I I, I, I know I scrap it. Um, it just becomes too much of a pain in the butt. So I'm using the selection tool here. Uh, if you go to the uh, select menu in Photoshop, you can select color ranges, which I don't really recommend doing for a lot of things. Since I was going to be chopping this tree up anyway and doing a lot of blending stuff, it doesn't matter. But if you're actually using um, the selection color tool, it's not really an end-all be-all because you do get jaggy edges and a lot of little bits left over. This is the better way to do it. Uh, right now on this image, I'm just cutting out the tree. I'm outlining it with the eraser, taking away all the parts closest to the tree. That way I can just kind of run through and do a big chaotic kind of pass with a, with a wider eraser brush uh, and not hit any of the tree like you see here. It just makes it a lot easier. A lot of artists will use masks to do this, and I do use a fair amount of masks in the stuff I do, but for this, I didn't need any of the rest of this image at all. Um, because I knew I was going to be chopping it up. So I just went ahead and cut out the bits that I needed. This process, <laughs> this process is actually pretty tedious. Um, the thing with Photoshop is people think it's, you know, one button, you know, click a button and it, it does all this cool stuff for you. It, it, that's not, that's not the way it is. You've actually got to do a lot of this kind of stuff. Uh, and if you're not in the mood for it, it really does become tedious. Uh, trees are very complicated things. Uh, they don't really seem like it, but you've got a lot of branches, you've got a lot of things sticking out, a lot of overlapping. Uh, so trees are a pain in the butt. I don't really recommend working with trees if you can avoid it. Uh, so right now I'm using the polygon lasso tool, which is honestly one of my favorite tools in Photoshop. Uh, ideally, like I said, you would use a mask for stuff, but when you're going to be chopping it up anyway, it really doesn't matter. Polygon lasso, lasso tool is great. I use it for so much stuff. So here we go. I don't, don't know why I'm messing around with the, the color of the tree without actually having my background visible. Um, so now I'm just copying the tree over and over again and kind of just placing it on top of itself and, and essentially like Lego, just building a tree out of what I already have. Doing some you know cheeky little... Uh, horizontal flips there to, to make it seem like I'm not using the same image over and over again. Um, and using the warp tool to kind of blend the bark in. I ended up doing some painting over this, but I really just wanted the shape and the general color palette to make this work. So as you can see here, I'm doing a little bit of painting to kind of, just to kind of make it seem like it's not a bunch of images cobbled together, all Frankenstein-like. There's a lot, you can do a lot of stuff with just photo mashing, and I, I really like photo mashing. It's a great way to either, you know, build stuff that's not, you know, not feasible to paint in any given time, uh, and, and it's a fun way to add texture to things you've painted. But I, at the end of the day, I, I do also like painting, so I try and include as much painting with as much actual, you know, photo mashing as I can. Uh, for anyone who's not familiar with the term, uh, I don't don't even know if it's a technical term. Photo mashing is when you're taking a bunch of existing photos and doing exactly what I'm doing right now, blending them together, uh, making them fit. Uh, instead of just painting an entire scene, because that can take forever, and you don't, if you're going for a realistic look, it's going to take you a long time to get that look. Um, unless you're unless you're super good, I'm definitely not good enough to. Uh, to you know, paint an entire realistic landscape in in a couple of hours. So I do a lot of this stuff. Uh, it's fun too. It, it definitely gives you um, a real appreciation of the the power that Photoshop has for stuff. Uh, I've seen a lot of really cool <clears throat> cool photo mashes from people, and some of the stuff just you know, just blows my mind. Okay, so now I've taken a lot of the uh, initial image of this tree that I've cut out, and I'm basically just copying it uh, and shrinking them down, transforming them down um, to make them smaller branches. Now I'm just painting in some additional branches. These things aren't crazy, super duper important because I am going to be putting a bunch of foliage on this later on, so 
even if you know some of these limbs do look a bit scraggly, they are going to be hidden uh, by a lot of the, the work I do later on uh, with this this asset. Now I tend to work on a lot of different layers just because it gives you the freedom to go back and change things. You know, you can mess around with lender, layer blending options, which I do a lot. Uh, and it just makes it easier if you've, if you've separated your images. Now I know a lot of artists will just paint on, on one layer and I'm trying to get better at doing that, but it's it's really difficult because you know, you're terrified of, of messing up. Um, and then you've got to go back and fix it and, and it, it can become a huge nightmare. So I use a lot of layers, but uh, if you are starting off um, as a Photoshop artist, I would suggest learning, you know, developing your your regular painting skills. That's one thing I never really uh, did. I didn't do much uh, traditional medium painting. Um, and if I had, I would be a lot better at this already. Uh, so what I'm doing here is I'm messing around with the, the concept of flipping this image in a way that um, that makes sense for the whole portal thing. Now the videos jumped ahead a little bit. Um, I decided to take a break from the actual uh, fabrication of the image to just messing around with the actual um, the band logo and the band name because I had a couple things I was doing with that. So I think I got bored of that and now we're going back to the tree. So there we go. Put the tree in there. I think the last the last um, section when I had this tree up. I had not saved it or something and, and hadn't done what I was supposed to do. So now I'm just kind of making the tree blend in with the lighting scheme. So in this image, a lot of the light's coming from the top right. I noticed when I flipped the tree that it was all lit from the, the top left. So uh, <laughs> that didn't work. Um, so now I'm just making the, the lighting work. I created an alpha mask for the tree. And this is where I start to use alphas because alphas are super important. Let's you draw inside the image without drawing anything on the background. Uh, and it's just it's just super handy to have alphas. It's just a, a very like streamlined work <laughs> workflow. So messing around with the alpha. Not quite sure what's going on here. Oh, I was playing around with blending options just to see if anything would be you know more beneficial. And I was playing around with the, the color just to make it blend into the overall color scheme of this image a bit better. Now right now it just looks like I've I placed a tree down and it's really boring. So I'm drawing in some shadows, um, and since it is coming from the t uh, light source, is coming from the top right, the shadows are going to be kind of like you know bottom left underneath the tree. These are very rough, uh, just to give me a just to give kind of the look of depth while I'm working on it. I, I think I do eventually go in and even these shadows out and make them look a little bit better. It's very important when you're doing stuff like this to really think of all the different aspects of how the light is affecting your image. Um, too many people put, you know, put digitally created assets into a flat image and don't really give a whole lot of thought to the way the light hits them. And that is re really what makes things uh, stick out is obviously being not part of that image is, is you know, poor lighting. If it's not lit the way the, the, way the rest of your scene is, it's going to look weird. So this is me painting a bit more, just giving it some highlights on this side. I thrown in some shadows there just to kind of make it blend in a bit more. I think this bit took a while just because the trees, I don't know, it's intricate enough to actually, uh, you know, need to spend some time on. <clears throat> the branches up top I didn't work on too much because I knew they were going to be hidden with foliage. I wasn't even sure how I was going to do that foliage. Um, but uh, I just kind of winged in and then what I got turned out pretty well. So we don't want a tree just sitting on top of the sand dunes. So what I'm doing now is I'm making it look like some of the tree is actually sinking into the dune or some of the sand has blown up against the roots of the tree. I did want it fairly exposed just so you get the idea that this tree's been here a long time. Is it dead? Is it alive? We're not really quite sure. So I did throw um, I did throw a fair amount of sand to cover up parts but I left a lot of bits out. 
<clears throat> I also find it's very helpful when you're doing this kind of stuff not to work on one area too, too long. Um, mainly for a couple of reasons. A, you're going to get bored, and if you're if you're staring at the same thing over and over and over again, you kind of it all kind of blends together, and you sort of lose the overall idea of what you're doing if you're staring at the exact same area. So I do tend to jump around a lot. You see me jump down like to the sand dunes here, then I go up into the tree and mess around. There's a lot of different things I do uh, to jump around, just so I don't get bored of looking at the same thing, and just so I don't overdevelop one area. You don't want to develop one area so much that it, it loses continuity with the rest. So right now I'm just storing in some real basic uh, like tree foliage here. I wasn't really sure where I was going with this. I messed around with a couple of custom brushes and you can see me uh, playing around with the brush settings there to try and get a, a random leafy look. So I, I don't really have um, a whole lot of different custom brushes. I tend to use just the brush presets that come with Photoshop. Uh, I, I mean, I do encourage getting uh, as many different brushes as you can, but honestly, I'm kind of lazy. And you can actually accomplish a lot of stuff with the brushes that come default in Photoshop. So you can see me messing around, trying to find one that actually does what I want to do. Uh, and I went with one that was kind of very... Uh, hatchy and uh, all over the place. Not a very solid one. One with lots of negative space. Because you can do a lot with those. You can you can rotate them. As you can see here, I've got this kind of a wavy, curly look to things going on. It looks almost like I don't know animal fur. And so I'm just putting in highlights uh, and shadows wherever I see fit. And every now and then, I'm just changing the preset for the brush just to kind of break it up and keep things looking a little bit more organic and a little bit more interesting. I I, I ended up getting this image, which I, I really like the image. It's got a lot of depth and a lot of kind of cool things going on. Uh, and I'm just copying it and pasting it and I'm putting it over top of the ink that I've already, well not ink, the, the pixels that I've already laid down. And then I'm going to play around with um, the eraser tool and kind of erase it around where uh, I already have uh, I already have stuff filled out and then I'm going to play with the blending options and basically what it does is it gives the boring pixels that I have there it gives them this really kind of neat textured look which can uh, you're basically faking leaves at that point and it's kind of it's kind of a neat effect and I do this with a lot of stuff Right now I'm making an alpha channel uh, based on the ink that I already put down. And as you can see here, there's a lot of like a little bit of extra extra like stuff around the edges when I turn the alpha layer off that needs to get taken away because otherwise it just kind of looks like a, a big cloud of weird green stuff. So I used a, a random eraser, eraser brush to take away a lot of this extra uh, outside garbage and take away some of the stuff inside too, just so it doesn't look like you've thrown a picture, you know, a, an image over top of uh, these pixels. Um, I think here, I think I was looking for more uh, foliage type stuff and then I ended up just settling with what I had already there. So here I'm, I'm erasing parts of it to make it look like there are, you know, branches sticking uh, out in the foreground and the background, just to give it some depth, because otherwise you just look, it looks like you've thrown all this stuff over top of an image and it looks boring and unrealistic. And now I'm painting in smaller branches to give it a bit more variation, because I've noticed that there were some branches in the image that I overlaid. And I really like that look. You can see on the bottom left there, there's a couple of like vines and stuff hanging down. And I really, I really like that look, the way, the way it kind of worked with the image. So I decided to paint some more in, just to, you know, maintain that continuity. So it's just more erasing some extra stuff that was left behind. And then I went back to working on the shadow for the, or the lighting for the tree, just because I, I didn't feel like the tree blended in super well. You know, messing with blending layers and opacity. Blending layers are really powerful tools and they can do a lot for you. Um, 
here I'm messing with just the overall color scheme of the the branches and the foliage. I didn't like that it was so super vibrant green. I didn't think that that would really work in a desert setting. Now I've gone back to flushing out those shadows underneath the tree to make it look less like it was painted by an amateur and, and more so, you know, like you'd actually want to sell this. There we go. <laughs> the edge of that sand dune was looking pretty weird, and I wasn't sure if I'd noticed that. So now I'm just putting in some highlights, because uh, obviously the dune comes from, or the light comes from the top right. So, you know, these dunes kind of build up in these, these very geometric shapes with, like, hard, crisp lines, like you can see me outlining there. Uh, and I really like, I really like the way sand does that. I think it looks pretty cool. And right here, I'm just throwing in some uh, extra blocks of color just to make certain areas of the image pop. I did want to have like a, like a segregation between background and foreground, and doing that also gives it depth. Because obviously, the further away things are, the more, you know, the, there's more air and more moisture in the air between you and whatever's in the background. So the further away it is, either the less saturated or the lighter it will look, which is... A really cool effect and can make your images look very realistic without actually not doing a whole a whole lot of technical stuff. Here we go, just throwing some more sand in. Uh, you can never have enough sand. Really dig sand. And I think I blur this out. Yeah, I blur it a little bit because it's kind of in the foreground. I think I eventually take some of that out because it's uh, it's a little bit much. Doing some more saves. Oh, tree bark. Look at that. I thought it was getting raw from talking. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing some Minecraft here. I'm going to build myself a tree fort. So this was just some some more photo mashing and, and more kind of texturing just to make the initial tree look a bit more a bit more knobbly and barky. I noticed that the tree that I made was actually kind of a lower resolution than the rest of the image. And that's something that I was going to point out as well. When you're working with multiple different images it's always really good to try and find ones of very similar resolutions uh, otherwise you know stuff like this happens where you have a, a, an element in the foreground that's the focal point of your image that's a much lower resolution than the rest of it and it just really looks really out of place so i noticed that and now i'm putting in this extra tree texture to kind of maybe up res it a little bit so it looks less strange um, the, I'm using the warp tool for this, which lets you, uh, obviously warp, uh, an image, lets you change different points of it, kind of bend it and morph it around, uh, um, a surface. So it's kind of, kind of a neat tool. I use it a lot. I'm not actually sure what I'm doing. I think I went upstairs to grab a drink or something then. A little bit of a pause there. Oh yeah, so now I, I realize, oh man, my, my foliage isn't actually casting any shadows, and probably should be. So I uh, this is a super easy technique you can do uh, for things like foliage and like I don't know, overhangs of buildings. You can use it for reflections on water. You just take whatever you want reflected, duplicate it, desaturate it, and then squish it down with the transform tool. Put it over whatever you want, either put it on multiply or, or darken color, one of those kind of layers. And then you get this kind of cool shadowy effect. Now I'm just giving some overall uh, tints and shadows to uh, the foliage and the rest of the tree, just to make it all kind of blend together. And I think this is close to the final image without all the portally stuff going on. Oh, I decided I needed a branch there. That was really important. More saving, always save your work. Save your work as often as possible because if you lose it, you will be a sad panda. I have lost so much work because I was working with programs that weren't super stable or just power outages and stuff like that. Save your work always. It is super important. So right now I'm making these rings and I'm just kind of cutting the rings out of each other um, and giving myself an area that I can quickly select and use to uh, move the background. 
So this was the initial portal thing I was going with, and I showed you the, um, the final image at the start of the video here. It ended up being quite different from uh, the image you see me creating here. Uh, this is a good example of when, you know, your vision as an artist uh, or a designer kind of clashes with the client's vision. Now, I was told we were going through this portal effect, and I was like, oh man, we could do this kind of swirly, I don't know, like stereotypical portally thing going on. And whilst I think it, I, I pulled it off, uh, when I took it to the client, we really weren't happy with it. Uh, they were like, nah, this isn't what we super envisioned. The image was fine, but the, the portal didn't work super well. So we actually got into a bit of a, a bit of a debate. Thankfully, the client is a friend of mine, so you have a bit more leeway with what you can tell them. I thought his idea was going to look terrible. And I told him that. I was like, nah, man, I was like, this isn't going to work. Like it's, it's going to look bad. And he's like, no, nah, well, just, just, just try it and, and, and see what, uh, you know, see how it comes out. And I tried it and it ended up looking really good. Um, so, you know, you don't always know everything. And that's, uh, that's something to bear in mind, even, even as an artist and a designer, you don't always know everything. None of this stuff made it into the final image. I'm playing around with like some kind of starbursty type uh, effect. And I wasn't really sure what I was going for. Basically I wanted to make the, uh, the text pop out from the background and they ended up changing the name of the EP. So this one is Through the Looking Glass, uh, and they settled on Glass Atlas, which I like better because it kind of fits fits with the image better and it's much easier to say. Yeah, so I was trying to make it pop, but I found it ended up just erasing most of the image I'd created and it was kind of pointless. So the final image that, you, that I ended up with worked out way better than this. Okay, guys, um, if you like the video, let me know in the comments section down below. Hopefully, I'll be making some more pretty soon. Um, I will also post a link in the description of the video to uh, Tactus's work, so you can check them out. Uh, if you're a big fan of progressive metal, you will probably like them. Uh, thank you for watching, guys. Uh, leave any feedback, comments, criticism, whatever. Let me know. Take care.